Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. The topic of this video is hybrid systems. Generally, hybrid vehicles are considered to have good fuel efficiency. This video will explain the reasons for the good fuel efficiency of hybrid vehicles, the types of hybrid system, and the operating principles of some hybrid systems. Before providing an explanation, please familiarize yourself with the terms used in this video. A vehicle equipped only with a gasoline or diesel engine is referred to as an ICE, internal combustion engine vehicle. An electric motor primarily used for driving a vehicle is referred to as an electric motor, and an electric motor primarily used as a generator or engine starter is referred to as a motor generator. There are two main reasons why hybrid vehicles have good fuel efficiency. The first reason is the ability to utilize the efficient operating range of engine rotation. These graphs represent the performance curve of a gasoline engine. With an automatic transmission, it is necessary to operate at an engine speed range with higher fuel consumption. But with a hybrid system, it is possible to operate at only the lower fuel consumption range. Therefore, hybrid vehicles have better fuel efficiency. Furthermore, while the engines of an ICE vehicle need to deliver performance across a broad range of rotations, in hybrid vehicles, it is possible to focus on designing for specific rotation range, resulting in an even more fuel-efficient engine. The second reason is the regenerative brake system. Brake systems utilize the frictional force of brake pads or brake linings to convert the kinetic energy of the vehicle into thermal energy. This process slows down the vehicle by dissipating heat into the atmosphere. In other words, ICE vehicles discard the energy at braking possesses. In hybrid vehicles, the hybrid motor acts as a generator during braking, converting the kinetic energy into electrical energy. The generated electrical energy is then charged in the battery. Utilizing the charged electricity further reduces fuel consumption at the next acceleration. However, hybrid vehicles have drawbacks. Due to the inclusion of electric motor and battery, they are heavier and more expensive. Hybrid vehicles can be classified into strong hybrids and mild hybrids, based on whether they can run solely on an electric motor. A strong hybrid is a system that can drive the vehicle solely on electric motors with the engine stopped. It requires a high output electric motor and a hybrid battery with a certain level of capacity. A mild hybrid is a system that uses a low-output electric motor to assist the engine only during start and acceleration. It is common to use an ISG that combines the starter motor and alternator for the hybrid motor. If you're not familiar with ISG, please watch the video. How a starter motor, an alternator and an ISG, integrated starter generator work. The link is provided in the description. Initially, mild hybrid systems used a 12-volt electrical system, but in recent years, they have been employing 24-volt or 48-volt electrical systems. Hybrid systems can also be classified into three types based on the method of power transmission, series hybrid, parallel hybrid, and power split hybrid. A series hybrid uses the engine solely for electricity generation. The electric motor is powered by the generated electricity, and the vehicle is driven solely on the electric motor power. A parallel hybrid operates the vehicle using three methods, engine only, electric motor only, and both the engine and electric motor. Typically, it starts with the electric motor, switches to the engine when the vehicle reaches a certain speed, and assists the engine with the electric motor when significant acceleration is required. A power split hybrid system divides the engine output into power generation and propulsion through a power split device. This allows for the most efficient use of the engine depending on the driving conditions. THS, the Toyota Hybrid System, is a type of power split hybrid system. An electric motor, a motor generator, an engine, and an output gear are interconnected through a planetary gear set to control the power flow. To understand THS, it is necessary to first comprehend the mechanism of planetary gears. If you are familiar with planetary gears, please use the seek bar to skip this chapter. A planetary gear consists of three components. 
an internal gear, a sun gear, and a planetary carrier. The internal gear has teeth on its inner circumference located on the outer side. The sun gear is at center. The pinions connect the sun gear and the internal gear, and the planetary carrier assembles the pinions. The pinions rotate individually, and also rotate together with the planetary carrier. Let's try applying the brake to the internal gear to prevent it from rotating, and applying an electric motor to the sun gear shaft for input rotation. The input rotation speed into the sun gear is reduced, and then output from the planetary carrier. When the electric motor is applied to the planetary carrier, the input rotation speed into the planetary carrier is increased, and then output from the sun gear. Next, let's apply the brake to the sun gear to hold it in place. The input rotation speed into the planetary carrier is increased, and then output from the internal gear. The input rotation speed into the internal gear is reduced, and then output from the planetary carrier. Lastly, let's apply the brake to the planetary carrier to hold it in place. The input rotation speed into the internal gear is reversed and increased, and then output from the sun gear. The input rotation speed into the sun gear is reversed and reduced, and then output from the internal gear. Let's try thinking of this planetary gear as a transmission. Attach the tires to the internal gear, and install an electric motor on the planetary carrier in place of the engine. Due to the friction between the road surface and the tires, the tires face significant resistance, so when the planetary carrier is rotated with the electric motor, the sun gear will rotate idly. When a braking force that is greater than the resistance on the tire is applied to the sun gear to hold it in place, the internal gear and tire rotates, allowing the car to start. When the braking force is slightly reduced, the sun gear rotates slowly, and the rotation speed of the internal gear is reduced. Further reducing the braking force causes the sun gear rotation speed to increase, while the internal gear rotation speed is reduced even further. If you want to learn more about planetary gears, please watch the video, How a Planetary Gears and Hydraulic Multiplate Clutches Work. The link is provided in the description. First, let's take a look at the arrangement and connections of each component. The electric motor and internal gear are directly linked to the differential, meaning that the rotation of the electric motor is transmitted directly to the tires. The motor generator is connected to the sun gear. The engine is connected to the planetary carrier through the motor generator and the sun gear. When the vehicle starts, the engine is not used, and only the electric motor operates. When the vehicle reaches a certain speed, the motor generator operates as a starter motor and starts the engine. During consistent speed driving, the electric motor is stopped, and the vehicle runs solely on the engine. At this time, the motor generator is operated as a generator. The varying amount of generated electricity changes the load of the generator and resistance of the sun gear. Therefore, the varying amount of generated electricity changes the vehicle speed, while the engine speed remains constant. Now, when the electricity generation of a motor generator is low, it means that the resistance of the sun gear is also low. Therefore, the internal gear speed and output speed is low. Increasing the electricity generation of the motor generator results in a lower rotational speed of the sun gear, leading to higher speeds for the internal gear and the output rotation. When the electricity generation is increased further, the internal gear and output rotation speed will increase even more. In this way, THS can adjust the required vehicle speed and power generation continuously while maintaining the most efficient engine speed. During acceleration, the electric motor torque is added to the engine torque to generate sufficient acceleration. 
During deceleration and regenerative braking, the motor generator operates as a generator to charge the battery. The THS shown in this video is the first generation that appeared in 1997. Today, Toyota cars equipped with 4th to 5th generation THS are available for sale. Renault E-Tech is also a type of power split hybrid, but unlike THS, it uses a dog clutch transmission in its power split device. If you're not familiar with dog clutch transmission, please watch the video, Manual Transmission and Clutch, How They Work. The link is provided in the description. First, let's take a look at the arrangement and connections of each component. The electric motor is connected to a shaft with two fixed gears. The shaft connected to the engine has two shiftable gears and one fixed gear, arranged coaxially with the shaft of the electric motor. The counter shaft is equipped with two shiftable gears and one fixed gear. The output shaft features three fixed gears and two shiftable gears. It outputs power to the differential from one of the fixed gears. The motor generator is connected to the fixed gear on the counter shaft via an idler gear. At the vehicle start, the engine is not used, and only the electric motor is in operation. During this time, the lower gear on the output shaft is engaged, and power is transmitted through the following sequence. Electric motor, electric motor shaft, output shaft, and the differential. When the vehicle reaches a certain speed, the motor generator operates as a starter motor and starts the engine. After the engine has been started, the low speed gear on the engine shaft engages, and the engine output is transmitted to the output shaft. As the vehicle speed increases, the transmission on the engine side changes the gears. E-Tech combines engine side 4 speed gears, and electric motor side 3 speed gears, depending on the driving conditions to enable driving and generating. If large regenerative braking is required, the engine side transmission is shifted to neutral, allowing all the driving force from the tires to be directed to the electric motor. It generates a significant amount of electricity and braking force. Nissan E-Power is a series hybrid. The electric motor and engine are not mechanically connected. The vehicle driving force is produced by the electric motor, while the engine solely powers the generator. When starting the vehicle and during low-speed driving, it operates using the electric power charged in the battery. When the battery level decreases, or during heavy load conditions, such as strong acceleration or high-speed driving, the engine operates to generate electricity while the electric motor propels the vehicle. The Honda 2 motor hybrid system combines the features of a series hybrid and a power split hybrid. There is one gear fixed to the engine output shaft, and additionally, it has another gear through a hydraulic multiplate clutch. The electric motor is engaged with the gear through the hydraulic multiplate clutch. The motor generator is engaged with the fixed gear on the engine output shaft through the electric motor. The differential is connected to the gear of the hydraulic multi-plate clutch on the engine output shaft via an idle gear. During normal driving, it operates as a series hybrid. The engine and output shaft are not mechanically connected, and the vehicle runs solely on the electric motor. In situations requiring battery charging, such as rapid acceleration or low battery charge level, the engine activates the motor generator to generate electricity. During highway driving, the engine is more efficient than the electric motor. The system connects the engine in the output shaft using a hydraulic multiplate clutch to enable propulsion through engine power. In the latest two motor hybrid systems, the electric motor and motor generator are arranged in parallel. A parallel hybrid system uses a single electric motor for driving the vehicle, generating electricity, and starting the engine. Similar to other hybrid systems, it starts with only the electric motor and adds the torque from the electric motor in addition to the engine during acceleration. It charges the battery during deceleration, but it cannot charge the battery when driving with the electric motor. 
In PHEVs, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, due to their large capacity battery, demand for battery charging is lower compared to HEVs. Car manufacturers such as Mercedes-Benz, Stellantis, and Mazda have adopted a parallel hybrid system for their PHEVs. Mercedes-Benz uses a torque converter, whereas, Stellantis and Mazda employ a hydraulic multi-plate clutch, as an alternative to the torque converter. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.